Hello everybody, I'm French Grandmaster Laurent Fressinet and I welcome you to the eighth episode of the Chicken Chess Club podcast where I am once again joined by my dear friends who are in Norway, they are sending me pictures of them. Peter Heine Nielsen with their two help uh, world champion Magnus Carlsen and the official commentator uh, Grandmaster Jan Gustafsson. Hi, how are you? Hi, Laurent. Great to see you again. Yeah, we're having a great time. Peter and I, we're taking walks around the lake, enjoying the Norwegian countryside, living the life. Talk, talking about what? what? What's the main subject of conversation? Chess. Um, chess, really? No, probably not. I don't think we talk that much. It ranges from how tough our lives are to Peter's... <laughs> Um, political ambitions and me mildly mocking them, but it's less fun to mock them one on one. So I'll save most of it for here. Yeah. Well, also, I think Jan is not giving the full story because well, it's true Never. that what I do is I, I go for walks with uh, Jan and then I work on prep and, uh, well, sp you know, spend time with my boss. My feeling is that Jan has a much richer social life than than me to that extent. But for me, it's just, uh, well, the typical routines when you are chess second, that, uh, well, you stare at the computer, you look at some chess, and you stare at the, the game happens, and then you hang out with your player in the evening and such. So it feels pretty pretty usual in that way, but of course also with, uh, with chess politics happening uh, at, at this exact moment, of course, I'm also a bit into that. So it sounds like business as usual, are tweeting, of course, obviously, and such. The problem is that if I talk to anybody that's on the list of Peter's many political rivals, Peter considered <laughs> it as a betrayal. So if I'm if I'm having a chat with Jöran or, um, I don't know, I can't really keep track. But usually it always feels like I'm backstabbing Peter if I'm talking to anybody else. So, but uh, Giri is not into politics, right? That is true. Not not, not officially. <laughs> But, but you're right, there is basically three camps that uh, I see you're chatting with. There is Giri, which is separate, but that's uh, a different sure. sort of non-political thing. And then there is the two political camps, which will be Team uh, uh, Dvorkovic, which will be Joran Janssen. And then there is um, Silvio Danilov, uh, Topalov's manager. I have to admit that uh, I started uh, talking to Danilov again, which is a bit unusual. I think... Uh, well, at some point he blocked me on Twitter when I was critical of him. And I think for like eight, ten years, my general feeling was that if I was walking together with the Carlsons, he would say hi to me. If I would walk on my own, he would completely ignore me. But now we are on speaking terms again, probably because it's not like we agree on anything, but we, we're probably both against uh, the Russian leadership. So somehow we've got something in common, suddenly like that. But um, Peter... Is it, <clears throat> Saying hi and hi is not exactly a conversation either. No, but it's still progress, I think. Uh, That's true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, it depends so it where comes you're coming from. from. This, yeah, fair it, it comes from this uh, World Championship match in Sofia, right? Ah, way uh, before that, but of course uh, that one as well. Um, and and Vichy and Topalov are, are good, or how does that work? I Vichy think so. Okay. But probably not anymore, because Vichy is running with... Uh, with uh, Dvorko, right? Yeah, I don't think they are particularly friendly, but to say that they are enemies is probably too strong. Maybe they just come in the in different category to some extent. But um, I mean, it's not 2010 anymore. But probably, I mean, to call them them friends would be a bit too much. But uh, I have to admit, I'm mainly paying attention to who uh, Gusti is talking to, so I can really keep track of all the others. <laughs> We should maybe explain for our beloved listeners that, yeah, we are all in the same hotel here in at a chess tournament, Norway Chess, where Magnus Carlsen, Vishiana and Veselin Topalov and many others are playing. So you run into chess royalty all the time. Everybody is on the same schedule in the dining room people get the same choice between meat fish and vegetarian so it's it's rough if you're not on good terms 
yeah. with people because they will constantly sit on the table on the table next to you. But of course, fortunately, I'm such a nice guy and so beloved in the chess world that I can just float like a butterfly from table to table with Peter watching angrily from afar. <laughs> <laughs> you make a good point, but also you are right that that I mean we are like 25 people here, more or less living in a bubble and such. I will say that earlier years, well, maybe not more friendly, but more social. I remember we were all playing this uh, sort of, uh, not card game, but uh, what is it called? This uh, Avalon. Let's bring back Avalon. Avalon. Bring Miss Avalon. We were playing Avalon, some kind of uh, spy game. And there will be like eight, ten uh, players last second sitting in the reception at night playing this. But I think now we just everybody is hiding in their rooms and such, being on uh, so somewhat unfriendly. But, right? but the problem is also the schedule. The round starts yeah. at five, then you're done at like ten thirty. You rush to dinner, exactly. then it's eleven, and it's a bit late to start a round of Avalon. Mm -hmm. Also, as far as I know, I mean, like uh, Fabi and Levon who are playing, yeah, that game, and they're not playing here. So I mean, yeah, but Magnus, Maxime, many guys were joining it. It could be possible yeah. to gather an Avalon set, but somehow. I seem to have fallen a bit out of fashion in that way. I'm just saying that this time it feels uh, less social than it usually did. And it's not like it felt that social uh, usually in a way. But uh, maybe. But I you missed all you. the fun, Peter, before the rest day. Well, we, we had drinks in the lobby with a crew that he would have loved. Henrik Carlsen, Silvio, Veseline, Wang Hao, Erwin Lamy was there representing Anish Giri. <laughs> Juran was there. Yeah. Like it would have been your type of round. I know, I so know. Le, 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 Let's re remind to our listeners that Johan is a Norwegian guy who is running on uh, Vokovic uh, list. Yeah, Johan is a former uh, president of the Norwegian uh, Chess Federation. Then later he uh, ran on Dan Ilov's list for European Chess Union, which made him not that popular with me because I think Dan Ilov, um, uh, well... Uh, that's going to be a Capo. separate episode if we're going to go through that uh, and such. And now he's running on Dvorkovich's list and such. So uh, anyway, um, we are getting into the what's wrong with Fida this week segment already. And that's probably too <laughs> yeah. soon. Not at all. <laughs> just, just in your head. Ah, okay. <laughs> just talking about <laughs> who, who so we're speaking with. <laughs> okay. So let's go to the tournament. And, maybe. Uh, maybe that's... Well, the, the main attraction of the tournament is, of course, Vichy. Who is oh. doing... Uh, is the main attraction well. not Magnus Carlsen in Norway? I really think if you look at uh, all the kids greeting the players before the round, it's going to be Magnus. But uh, okay. Yeah, but for all the players around the world, I mean, the main surprise, let's say, not the main attraction, but the main surprise of the tournament is uh, Vichy doing incredibly well. I mean, yeah. like, who could expect uh, that from Vichy? Even if he did very well last tournament in Rapid. But that time in classical, it's just incredible. No, I think well, people. Too, Peter. I think people forgot about Vichy. I saw a tweet by an Indian chess fan saying, "Really looking forward to Norway chess. I just think it's a pity Pragnananda is not playing because I only know Magnus and none of the other players." Yeah, <laughs> times are changing. It, it is now. to some extent, but uh, I mean, so that Vichy surprised. is doing yeah. well in the tournament. It's never going to be shocking. I mean, uh, everybody understood he has the class. He's like a, I don't know, five-time world champion and such, and been number one in the world for a considerable period. Of course, it is impressive at his age that he can do that well. But um, not just um, at his age, he also hasn't played a classical tournament yeah. since yeah, 2019, exactly. and then mm -hmm. to just come back and do amazing at the time of recording. Five rounds have been played, and yeah, we'll go through the matchups in some more detail. But Vichy's in the lead. Yeah. Ahead we of Magnus and my boy Wesley So. And uh, yeah, and uh, Magnus, let's face it, was kind of uh, lucky to escape yesterday. I mean, it was really a completely losing position. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, Vichy is just uh, showing amazing, uh, amazing class. That's, I'm not surprised, of course, but uh, amazing shape as well, because, you know, he's running as a as a deputy president on Vokovic list. And you, you could imagine that he's a bit out of chess. Okay, he comes to Norway chess without any particular ambitions. And, uh, well, he just keeps on, he's on plus two, even winning Armageddon uh, at times. I mean, which, which is amazing to me when, when you think he's 52. 
So yesterday we had, or yesterday at the time of recording, we had the big matchup between Vichy and Magnus. Vichy had the white pieces in the regular game, and I was sort of thinking, okay, it's probably going to be a draw on either side. will push too hard. But I'm not sure how it came. Magnus took some liberties in the opening. Nothing extreme, but he played Bishop E7 against the Italian, and yeah. Played some slightly experimental moves, and Vichy just outplayed him for a big stretch of the game. Made some, yeah, really nice decisions, some subtle maneuvering. To me, it very much looked like Vichy from 15 years ago. Like, not just going for the for the kill, but some small moves, some, yeah, playing quickly, confidently, more or less. I was very impressed. But in the end, Magnus did what he does, was incredibly persistent. And Vichy... Yeah, missed, I think, one clear chance to put the game away when he played Rook C6 instead of Queen G4. And it ended in a draw. Yeah, Vichy was very, very, or not even upset, but just sad that he missed that great chance in in the post-game interview. Although he did win the Armageddon, which is what they do here. If the game ends in a draw, then they play another game where White gets 10 minutes but has to win. Black gets seven minutes, but it draws enough. The score is insanely in White's favor, like 14 out of 16, some, something across these lines. Wow. So, yeah, White is just completely crashing. It was different last edition, but here it also feels, and we see Magnus, who should always be a favorite, losing, I think, two Armageddons with the with the black pieces now. Feels like maybe these seven minutes, it's just too much stress. Yeah, let me jump in here. Well, you said Vichy, in, uh, Vichy is like 15 years ago. I, I actually, apparently I'm that old that I actually worked for Vichy 15 years ago, if I calculate correctly and such. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of the chess was similar. I would still say he was more exact then. And that's probably what lacked yesterday because uh, he definitely got Magnus into a completely lost position. But sort of um, the ability to cal calculate extremely exactly at the crucial moment is probably more difficult with him now. For now. And that's exactly what went wrong yesterday. He actually had a winning uh, position and it and it took a couple of complicated moves that uh, Vichy at his best would just find rather easily as such is my impression. So there is a considerable uh, difference there. But uh, yeah, I mean, I also heard some interview with him and he said he was unsure what's going to happen here. But he said, of course, you know, well, when you get an invitation like this, you take it very seriously and such. And at least... Uh, the Vichy I know uh, used to take any kind of a tournament very seriously and would prepare hard for it. He's also brought a, a second here, Sandipan Sand and such. He played a rapid tournament before. So he did a lot of stuff to get into to shape uh, and such. So, no, he's definitely in business mode. And I think he always is when there is a classical yeah. tournament ongoing. But you can see them at lunch before the game. It's not like there's a lot of... Chit chat, it's eat and let's get back to work, which is yeah how mm -hmm. most players operate. Uh -huh. But I think he does take it very seriously. Well, Vichy is being Vichy and uh, you know doing his thing and such. That is clear. It's not like uh, it's not a holiday in any way. It's I'm not saying that it's a holiday for anybody, but like let's say to Palov, I think he goes and plays his games. He prepares a bit and such, and um, well, he'll see how it goes. Vichy is more. Yeah, he didn't bring anyone. Only he came with Danilo. Yeah, uh, he which came with Danilo. Help at all. But, uh, yeah, but I think he also Topalov also had a always had a slightly different approach. Mm -hmm. To me, it's amazing, because when I used to play chess, I was always super tense before the games as well. While Topalov, like, you can see him in the lobby or at lunch, and you can hit him up with any topic uh, before the game, and he'll he'll happily talk about it. So I think he's maybe in a more more relaxed place to begin with. Yeah, fair But yeah, fair I'm not fair. sure if it changed from, from some time ago. No. To me, it always felt like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually impressive. I mean, yeah, some time ago he was mo much more... I mean, I saw him in different tournaments. He was much more uh, focused. But yeah, he looks like... Uh, I think it's difficult to, to, to have this transition from uh, caring uh, as much as possible to... I mean, apparently, and I think it's correct, I mean, like, Topalov doesn't care... So, I mean, he, he likes to win, of course, as all of us, but mm -hmm. he doesn't prepare that hard and he takes it easy. Which I'm is sure. my opinion. I think, I think so. He prepares, he's just more relaxed about it. <laughs> I remember discussing it with Larsen, and uh, I asked Larsen sort of how hard was it for Larsen to lose a game. He said, well, it was not nice, but then you try to win the next game and such. But I think more players take losses harder in a way. But I thought, like Larsen, I thought Tupalov could be the same exception. Mm -hmm. that 
okay, I lost today. I would rather have won, but the life goes on and such. He doesn't seem to sort of be that affected. Well, I've seen him affected when he lost game 12 of the World Championship, but that is a bit special. Else, I think he's just uh, playing and then, well, he moves on. Maybe I'm wrong. But There's two, two people as well, two players in the tournament who, who, I mean, you cannot guess actually if the guy uh, won or lost. I mean, Maxim, Maxim yeah. I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, you, you cannot guess from his face. I mean, you, you, you just see him in the street five minutes later after the game. You can't guess his result, mm -hmm. and most of the players you, you can. And actually, I was also impressed by Gay. I mean, Gay is also oh, uh, clip it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He keeps uh, straight face, whatever happens. Uh, I mean, even after uh, I don't know, I, I would have loved to 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 watch uh, to watch him after he lost to Magnus. The next ten minutes, let's say. But I, I guess I mean, like on the video, I saw when he is. I mean, he looked okay, not to, not happy, of course, mm -hmm. but you you couldn't. You couldn't guess the result. I mean, he, he would have made the same face if it would be a draw. No, I so, think he also um, makes a conscious effort not to, yeah, live in the past and focus on what's next to come. He had a quote about this in one of the interviews that, yeah, he learned it from Kramnik, apparently, that, yeah, you got to focus on what's next. You can't have your head empty with no. regrets. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but yeah, he, his mood doesn't seem so affected, which is surprising because he's also... Of course, more in the um, chicken chess club side where we work hard trying to avoid losses. But yeah, he he does seem mentally stable, which must be nice. Well, yeah, uh, exactly. And to come back to this uh, Armageddon topic, I mean, you mentioned Magnus lost two games. I think yesterday against Vichy was really a day off. I mean, he played so well the two previous days. I mean, just against Giri, the two games he won against Giri and Rajabov, I think it was just, I mean, like, it's, it's very, very difficult to point out a single mistake there, uh, just close to perfect games. But yesterday, I mean, it was so many... Uh, but it's also a bit different if you get a winning position because of your amazing second out of the opening and then you convert it. Then if you're under pressure now, of course, you'll make more mistakes. I mean, yesterday was too much. And, and in the Armageddon, it was as well, uh, not the Magnus we can, we can see in Rapid and Blitz. He was a bit opinion. slow, I mean, slow it, no, both in the Blitz tournament and some of the Armageddons. It's actually quite atypical for him, I would say. I mean, that's not how it normally is. You're used to that. He's incredibly fast. But here it's been a bit uh, differently, I would say. Um, uh, it's not every day that you can see the final move of the game, which is 95 or 6 check. I mean, he still has a chance to defend. I mean, if he doesn't, if he plays 94, I take B2. Yeah, I mean, it blundering might a knight be a draw, in one move. Um, yeah, uh, I thought it was computer. It's was lost, but yeah, it's not so yeah. 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 He, no, I mean, like, uh, I mean, it's just blunders a knight in one move. I mean, for someone who is so good at bullet and blitz. Doesn't happen every day that he, he gives a piece in one. Oh, well, also he left himself in like in a one second to against two minutes. Uh, um, yeah, still. Uh, situation. This is not uh, not ideal in many ways. So. Thing is also a bit deceptive if you're used to playing online, where you know that with a plus one second you can make a million moves at a good level. Well, if you're sitting there and you have to press the clock, I would guess the stress level mm -hmm. is very different, and the second is of course a lot less if you have mm -hmm. to move the piece and mm -hmm. then press the clock than online. But yeah, it does seem like White is crushing these Armageddons. We'll keep an eye on it. Although, of course, there were some flukes as well. Vichy was completely winning yeah. against Wesley with Black, then blundered a piece in one move and so on. But overall, if the game gets slightly complicated, Black is just in such time, time trouble mm -hmm. early on while White has his extra margin that it does seem, it oh. does seem tough for Black. Also to say, well, we sound like Magnus is not doing well here. That's, I think, technically not true. He's on, he's on plus two in, in classical uh, and uh, has gained some uh, rating points from his already very high starting points. So I think he's doing quite well. Uh, no, he's in, doing in fine. We were in just Vichy, has no? been a bit disappointing. And he's trailing Vichy by half a point. Well, half a point by the scoring system they're using here, which is uh, less than half a point in a, in a normal tournament. So I think he's doing pretty pretty well, but uh, of course I agree with Lohan that Vichy is the the story at the moment. But having said that, Magnus has put himself in a pretty good situation, uh, I would say, and also well, beating uh, Ratyabov and Giri is, uh, is is quite good in a way. Yeah, it's, and such, yeah, you may claim you may claim that he missed. Uh, unfortunately, he missed the first round. Uh, 
Yeah. I mean, like, he had a great opportunity to be to be better. Maybe that's what it takes to be 2,900, actually. When he's not going to miss such, then he may have a chance, actually, because, look, he's already winning rating. I mean, if he would win the game against Wangao, which was very, very possible, I mean, he could just collect the D5 pawn so, and be just a clear, clear central pawn up. I mean, then you can see him uh, getting to 2,900. I, at least I can. I agree that 2900 is not impossible, but he has to play at his best all the time. And that's maybe also what he spoke about when he was uh, coming up with this kind of target. That, uh, well, to do that, he had to push himself to, to the limits all the time in time, terms of playing to his best. Because, um, well, when you are like 50 points ahead of the rest, which he is, you don't necessarily have to be at your best in order to win events and so on. But to get to 2900, he has to play not perfect but at his best all the time. And that's obviously very dif difficult. And, uh, well, as we saw against Wang Hao, he had some inexact moves and gave away a considerable edge. I wouldn't say the position was winning because it's quite interesting. The computer is giving like plus two for white, but it also seems to think that it could be a positional fortress. It would actually be a very interesting game had it pro progressed like that, but it, but it didn't. And then basically Wang Hao made an effortless draw. But... Uh, well, now that you ask, maybe let's talk about the, the game with Geary, right? I think that was uh, quite interesting. Go on, ask. Ah, really? Uh, maybe I got it wrong. Uh, <laughs> but, um, well, that was actually very interesting because, um, well, Geary at some point took two rooks for a queen, right? And sort of by the standard math we have been told uh, in, in, in chess camp in the youth, he does like 10 points versus nine. But it transformed uh, indeed maybe difficult position in practical play, but still 0 0.00 in computer terms position for Geary to just a completely dead loss position in uh, one moment. And I think that going for a walk with, with Jan, I was saying that, well, it's not that easy to see. But Jan said, no, no, for someone like me, it's actually pretty easy to see. So maybe you'll explain. What is it that's so easy in that <laughs> position? <laughs> wow, you're making me sound even worse but no i was shocked by this queen takes a1 even doing commentary unplugged to me the position just looks totally lost after it it's not so much the two rooks versus the queen but the opposite color bishops and the peace activity because white will attack on the light squares this move g4 was nice but also fairly fairly obvious you make a luft and you prepare g5 to attack and it just doesn't feel like black should survive this at all. Also, often, I mean, this old math, two rooks better than a queen. Very often, if there are other pieces on the board, let's say, I don't know, you take some rook on a8 and your queen gets trapped, some bishop b7, queen a7, rook a8. Almost always, these positions are better for the side with the queen. No, if there's still peace play. So I think this old logic really only applies in very certain situations. But yeah, back to that Geary game. I mean, the position doesn't look great. Computer says queen a3, knight a5, and it's holding. But this position after queen takes a1, I'm not sure what other grandmasters or other people would think. To me, it just looked lost, and I was completely and shocked king, that he went for it. The yeah. black king, I think you're right. It's a good point that the black king is very weak. I saw you played h6, which creates, I mean, this g4, yeah. g5. Uh, I mean, if you have the pawn g6 of, instead of h6, probably I, I would... Of course, uh, white is uh, is much better. That's obvious, but it's less simple here. G4, G5, and you have to do something because otherwise G6. And if you take knight takes, and it's a disaster because you get mated on H7, F7, uh, whatever. So <laughs> H6, I mean, uh, is adding to the to the weakness of the of the black king, uh, in my French opinion. You know, um, and it's not even yeah. move by move. No, it's like white makes any move, and he, he's you much think? much better. Black just doesn't have. Counterplay. Like, if you no, play of course H3? you should. Yeah. If you play h3 in that position, I'm sure white is still much better. I mean, it's a stupid move. Why at least play h4? No, but it's not that it's down to one tempo and one specific line that works. I think it's just a horrible, horrible position for black. Mm -hmm. Okay. I get okay, your so point. For me, it's just that, by, if you look at it, let's say black gets g6, bishop g7. I mean, it's not. Cr it's, I mean, then yeah. he will stabilize, and the rooks will somehow get into. But you don't get g6, no? Like that's what Laurent says. But that's the that's the problem, and then it comes a bit down to specifics, at least uh, 
in a way, but... Um, a little yeah. bit, but if you switch on the computer before G4, yeah. which is, of course, a good move, and play Bishop B3 or any move that doesn't I, allow I have to, mate, it's still like plus two. I have to admit that uh, be, even before Queen takes A1, I was very optimistic on Magnum's behalf. I mean, the computer is saying 0 0.00, 0, 0 but um, I thought Black had to walk a very narrow path, and also a path that wasn't that obvious. I kind of didn't expect him to take an a1, but I wasn't too sure. And to find queen a3, followed by knight a5, I thought, okay, it's not a given that he would manage that. Also because uh, well, the, the moves didn't really come up with any kind of reasonable story to me. They just seemed a bit random to that effect and such. But well, the actually... more shocking thing is that someone else well prepared as Giri yeah. would end up there. Like he mentioned himself, he mixed up the move order. He should play queen b6, rook d8, not bishop e6. Um which doesn't happen to him much. Normally he knows his lines and you can wake him up at 3 a.m. and he'll be very precise with move orders and so on. Yeah. Yeah. And we saw another game on that line actually later on. Uh, between Wesley cleaning oh, it up. Wesley, your boy, your boy. That is true. Your boy. We'll talk about that later. Sure. Uh, but uh, uh, maybe let's talk about... I, I thought the main uh, disappointing... Uh, well, hang on. Result we is... have to talk about the Ratjebov game and praise ourselves because we were basically predicting that game in the previous episode, right? Which Ratjebov? Uh, the Magnus against Ratjebov. I think in the previous episode someone said that this Queen C to B five line in the Catalan, well, um, White wins a pawn, Black has a theoretical draw, but sometimes he loses it and something like that, right? Yeah, uh -huh. I don't think it was last episode, but uh, we talked maybe. about it that it's in general a stupid line for yeah. Black. And uh, yeah, in the match, we or Magnus avoided it because there's this fear that in a match, Black will know every single detail. But overall, yeah, Black is just defending a position where the computer says it's a draw, but White has a choice between 15 different lines. It's impossible to remember them all. And that's not even you make a draw by three forced moves. It's mm -hmm. more White has an extra pawn on B2 or whatever. And the computer says it's 0-0 zero, because zero, White can't make a whole lot of progress. And that's just, just not a great practical line, is it? No, that's exactly what happened. I yeah. mean, well, I think Magnus said it in some interview that uh, yeah, his game plan was to take, uh, well, I will not use the word he said, but uh, bad, bad uh, pawn and then try and win with it. And that's exactly what he did. And uh, again, well, computer-wise, maybe it doesn't make much sense, but uh, practically speaking, it seemed to, to turn out quite well. That's what Hammer is trying to do. It's a game plan of Hammer in every single game, no? Uh, he will even take dangerous pawns, I think. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we, we, we have this joke with uh, inside jokes at Hammer at some point. Uh, I remember in the train camp I was analyzing, so sacrificing a pawn, and he asked me like, "Look, looked at me like a, co a competitor and told me, can you count?" I mean, like, he oh, likes no. this kind of pawns. The 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 quote comes from uh, Hammer was giving uh, television coverage during Weigand C. Yeah. I forgot which year it was. Was it 18 or 17? Well, against Caruana. But Caruana. it was before with me. Already ah, maybe. It before. But that's uh, like but, Mag Magnus yeah. and Caruana was playing there. And uh, I mean, Magnus, well, sacrificed, or according to Hammer, lost the pawn. And uh, Hammer famously <laughs> said on the weekend television that I don't see any compensation at the point when Magnus was. Uh, he wasn't giving mate yet, but it was, uh, was coming there. So, I mean. Well, again, that's... Yeah, uh, it was a nice game, yeah, from Magnus. Yeah, we see, we are not portraying uh, the, the team Magnus band as very positive or fair or something like that. But anyway, that's the, the work environment so, we create. So, uh, strange choice by Rajabov against... Ma okay, it's a topical no. line. So we cannot talk no, about it's a normal line. Choice, but, yeah. But yesterday, but, I mean, was... Uh, in general, I mean, uh, Teimo play here is kind of shocking. Yesterday was incredibly shocking, like... Confusing the move order of the Berlin move order after move five is kind of, uh, <laughs> I mean, like a record maybe. And uh, is it worrying before before candidates? I mean, just uh... well, if we're being honest, I don't think any of us believe that he's a big favorite to win the candidates. He hasn't been yeah. very active, and when he's been playing, he's mainly making draws, which of course we we endorse here. But here, yeah, he's mm -hmm. lost all his black games. And he he hasn't looked great like Rajabov and also Wang Hao looked a bit bit rusty. But yeah, Rajabov's game against Giri yesterday was very surprising. In the Berlin bishop b5, knight f6, d3, bishop c5, c3. Where okay, people castle or go d5. He played d6, and then after d4 he starts thinking, which yeah, yeah 
is bad news because after d4 you can't go bishop b6 because of d5 and e d c d bishop b4 check. I know how bad it is, but at the very least you want to have exactly. looked at it if you have to go for this. And it's also not the, great. the round had barely started and he was sort of well between clearly worse and lost from a theoretical sense, yeah. right? I mean, uh, mm. so no, he seems a bit. Uh, out of it, but uh, at least you can argue that uh, he gets some training before the the main event for him happens and such. But of course, uh, like you spoke, he was uh, barely one of the the outsiders, if anything, of the candidates tournament. So perhaps that hasn't changed a uh, lot. But of course, uh, yeah, no, he's but obviously I mean, not having a good get time. get cursed in candidates? Can we expect? I mean, like yeah, uh, three minus four. That that would have been a surprise. I mean, like I would expect him, let's say, before Norwiches. Uh, let's say you tell me Arja both in candidates, I would tell you probably 50%. Uh, I mean, in between min minus one and plus one, uh, something like that. No, he's and lost now? untouchable chicken status, no? Because before people used to say, okay, he's happy with the draw, but you don't want to mess with him. He's incredibly well prepared and he's also good. Mm. While here he gets crushed and then people will start targeting him at the candidates as well. And mm -hmm. he has to show that he's not a target, which won't be easy once. The shark no. starts circling. No, also, if he can't completely block in the openings with black, it's going to be difficult for him. Because, exactly. uh, because uh, it's well, not exactly his first Berlin. I mean, like, he play, he's playing mm. Berlin for more than 10 years. I mean, this D6 is just, it means that it's not a uh, theoretical mistake. I mean, it's just, he's completely out. Just, it's difficult to explain there. the move D6. Maybe yeah. he's hiding his prep. Maybe his prep is short castles. And to hide it, he went D6. Maybe I should praise it, yeah. Probably <laughs> my style. <laughs> but yeah. No, I, I don't know. It's um, it's it's a bit puzzling to me in a, in a way. But he has been away for chess for a long time and such. So, we'll, I mean, let's make the final verdict. But of course, uh, his stock has plummeted a bit. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. No, Wang Hao also looks very rusty. His break hasn't been that long. But he retired or announces retirement after the candidates. Now he made his, his comeback. And it... This feels like uh, me after a two years break playing Bundesliga. He's slow taking decisions. He's still better than me. Don't mean that. But he gets into time trouble yeah. and then things get completely out of hand. Yesterday, he hung a bishop in one move against Ariantari, which you don't see very often at this level. Well, so, I think he rust. explains the reasons for his, uh, his uh, retirement, right? That he actually has some kind of health problems uh, and that he seemed to have improved for that in a way. So he basically stopped based on that the chess was too too difficult for him health wise but uh, i mean it sounds like to me like he was somewhat coming out of retirement because it seemed reasonable for him to play chess uh, again right or yeah, yeah i never know how it works i hope he's doing no. doing better and he's fine but most people don't retire when they have some health problems that might go away. I understand, I'm not sure it but um, sure, fair enough. Um, well, So let's uh, maybe discuss how boy, uh, I mean your boy, Jan, I, sorry, I, I, Wesley. So he's on plus one, he won, uh, he won like, he only lost one Armageddon, won the rest. So doing very well, uh, amazingly yeah. well in press conference. I will come back to that uh, later with, with Jan, I mean, with... Uh, I can I can feel a bromance there. I mean, you understand each other uh, perfectly. Uh, but don't misunderstand me. I mean, like uh, he's a very likable guy. I think he's amazingly strong player. But I mean, he's such a chicken. I mean, this is a pity. I mean, really, really. I know I feel pity for him because if he would be just a bit more willing to take more risk, I mean, it would be it would be much more interesting for for us and for him as well i guess to play so yeah uh all respect to to Wes, just pity that he doesn't change a bit his approach but i'm sure you will disagree Jan, with your boy no i think you're right to some extent but being a chicken is not just a weakness it's also a strength it's what makes him work so hard it what makes him so incredibly well prepared and yeah being so untouchable in the opening so i think it always goes both ways like the feedback is always this guy had world champion potential but he wasn't taking enough risks and so on it was also the story about leiko or whoever but also being who he is made him as good as he is in chess so i think it's always a bit two-sided other than that yeah of course i agree that probably with his skills and his knowledge if he were to take some more risks i'm not sure in this tournament actually he took a lot of risks against Vichy, then he was, was much worse and got away with the move repetition. Otherwise, he's just been playing 
normal stuff to my mind. But yeah, According overall, the, I yeah. think that narrative is true. But I have to think, I have to say, getting back to the Bromans part, I'm really becoming a a much bigger fan of Wesley and his approach to life, really. Because in the chess world, there's this slight tendency, like everybody, I think, respects him. Everybody knows he's a nice guy and, yeah, that he's a great player. But there's a slight tendency to think, ah, okay, the, this guy is a bit strange with, like, his religion and so on. But he he's just so positive. Like, he never has a negative word to say about anybody. He goes to the confessional and praises to Paolo for two minutes. He seems happy to show up to the interviews. He's incredibly open. You could say too open, like about this Catalan line. He says, yeah, I don't like this move bishop b7 because white has so many tries and you're pawn down. Why not play a4, b4, knight ft2, c6, which they play in correspondence now, or knight ft2, knight d5. And like you would have to torture <laughs> Peter to say anything like that. And Wesley just drops it uh, unprompted in the press conference. He's also, yeah, just incredibly pleasant to talk to. Really never has a bad word for anybody. Oh, I'm a big fan. I... I have to say, like, it's, of course, the polar opposite from old, broken cynics like us. But it might be, frankly, a better way to live your life. He seems happy. <laughs> wow, he doesn't say anything bad about anybody. Big fan. That's big a, fan. The Norwegian fresh air is uh, so good for you. I mean, like, no. for sure. Let, let's wait. When you will come back to Hamburg, let's see if you if you have the same. Uh, no, I am but changed, I'm but I'm saying that I, yeah, no, it's I nice. res- no, respect. No, no. no it's very likable. I also I also yeah. enjoy. Uh, yeah, I kind uh, of agree. I mean, there is something positive about him, and he seems just uh, pleasant. And as you say, he tells what he thinks about chess. He doesn't care much. He plays his games. He does his best. And um, well, it's true he's on plus one, but to say he's played very chicken slizzly is too strong, I would say. No, in this tournament he's just playing normally. Of course, he plays tight he openings with black, but so does everybody yeah, else yeah. in more or less. I mean, and, uh, well, yeah, he's won a couple of Armageddons, which is a bit atypical for him in a way and such. So, no, I think I he's think just... So. Maybe not. Uh, maybe it's more atypical that Magnus is losing. Uh, but Yeah, uh, I think that's more. Yeah, maybe that's what I was actually meant. But no, he's doing doing great, and... Maybe he's not in an excellent position to win the event, but it's not too bad in a way. And I think okay, he's, today is where he's only like what? So, yeah. so uh, w- w- one point behind Magnus and exactly. one and a half it's not, uh, uh, behind I mean, Vichy. Mm-hmm. So what are your predictions? I mean, like Peter and Hai, uh, we still yeah, we still have the same. I mean, but Jan. Well, Wesley? I picked I picked Wesley before the tournament. No, like uh, okay, so I said, you this keep... tournament has Wesley okay. written all over. I. Don't know. Vish is doing well, but I have a feeling it's gonna be less likely that Vish scores more classical wins than Magnus from here. So I would think Magnus only being one point with his counting system behind would still be a favorite to finish out of Vishy. But yeah, I said before that this tournament has writ- Wesley written all over it. If so Wesley wins today with, with White, I, I stand with Wesley. Okay. Good. So maybe la- last word on uh, on Norway chess. I would like to congratulate Jan for his. Uh, we are all very positive today. No, but really, I enjoyed. Wow. I I didn't know the nice uh, uh, commentaries you are doing with Jovanka. I mean, it's very good. I mean, like you are very. It's a very nice couple. I mean, like uh, really, I, I don't know if you know her before, from before, if you ever commentated uh, commentated with her. But I think it's just uh, it's a great duo. In my opinion. Thank you, thank you. No, I, I don't think I even ever talked to her or maybe yeah, I think ah, okay. we met her met her once or twice and we talked off air, but I've never worked with her. Like uh, yeah, I think it's going it's going all right. Like I'm yeah. always very very critical of myself and the show and the usual. I never know where to look even after ten years. Do you look at somebody when you're talking to them? Do you keep looking at the chessboard or the camera? Those are those are my issues. But I think it's going all right and yeah, she's very nice and very easy to work with, so no complaints. Yeah, I, I am sorry, but I I'm yeah, turning on Hammer instead, so I haven't really seen your broadcast, so I can't really <laughs> come in with something there. But I, I wanted to say two things: a, I think Magnus is going to win the tournament, but b, I also want to be able to praise my guy, which is Wang Hao here, and I feel a bit um, uh, guilty towards him because I think. Uh, at some point, he asked for a lift in the Carlson car, and they said, sure, why not bring him in? And of course, with Magnus, I do my best not to disturb him before the game. But I somehow just, uh, I don't know, with Wang Hao, I started talking, and at some point, he said, yeah, yeah, he lives in, in Tokyo now. I said, ah, nice, so you read Japanese? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
basically 10 minutes before he had to play an important game, I took out my Shogi app and I was forcing him to sort of translate uh, complicated uh, Japanese sentences about Shogi just before he played. And it was probably not to his advantage that he sp had to spend his uh, brain capacity for that before the game. But uh, it was just so rare for me having someone who could speak uh, Japanese at hand to translate something for me, so I did that. But uh, well, of course he was doing it very willingly and was thanking me afterwards and such and being very friendly. But uh, no, he's, uh, he might just want to have a shout out for being a great guy and maybe I ruined him a bit. A shout out to okay. Wang Hao. Yeah. The tr and getting to the playing hall is rough, by the way, because the players, they can, there's all cars waiting for them. But for the measly, the measly <laughs> workers like myself, there's no transport. So I'm hitchhiking every day. That's not true. There is transport at like 3.30, but then I'd have to sit there for one and a half hours. Let's face it. Um, why would you? So I'm hitchhiking every day. And I'm I'm going in a different car almost every day because I'm trying not to jinx people. Like I went with Topalov and Danilov <laughs> one day, but then Topalov lost, and now I feel bad asking them again because even if they would say yes, it feels like it's slightly wrong because he lost when I went with them. Then I went with Tari. I think he also lost. Um, You're not gonna I go with, with us Giri again. Yeah, I, and I think yeah. I'm running. I'm running out of transport. I went with Magnus um, the day he drew this great position against Wang Hao. So it's, it's going to be tough for me to get it right, is what I'm saying. Right, so. <clears throat> okay. Moving on. So let's, let, let's move on to... So you are making a post-game interview. And we... So first of all, uh, uh, for Olympia. So you are always asking about Olympia to all... I mean, I saw you uh, asking to at least Maxim to confirm my... Uh, information so he's not going to play uh, yes. as Ali Reza and you, I saw you were asking Vichy as well and Wesley your... Wesley Wesley as usual dropping dropping knowledge yeah. Wesley mentioned the rumors that China might not show up with a good team which yeah I think is more or less confirmed at this point I'm not sure what's going on there if it's COVID related or maybe also Chinese politics related, the funding for the Chinese Federation could be a bit unclear. But currently it looks like there's going to be the US team with Wesley, Fabiano, um, Levon, Dominguez and Shankland. Nakamura is not, not playing and they will be on average at least 100 points higher rated than the second best team. There's no, no Russia, no China. No France with Ali Reza and Maxime. So I'm not sure yeah. if there will be any why, competition why, why? for the US team. So we, we don't know why Naka is not playing, which is a bit weird because he seems to make, to make a comeback. I mean, he wants his Grand Prix. Now we'll play candidates. So he could just uh, keep playing and go, go to India, win a gold medal. I mean, which is almost secured, actually. I don't know the reasons, I'm sure his Twitch followers will. Um, no more more details there. I've heard some rumors that, yeah, there were some arguments about the board order. But also, I don't think playing is his main priority. And with the candidates now, he'll be quite busy anyway. But frankly, I don't know. The good news for the US is since they have, yeah, I don't know, four top 12 players, even without him, that's probably not true. I don't know where Dominguez is, but somewhere in that neighborhood. They'll be completely yeah, very high. overpowering. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. I can get Nakamura's point. He has the candidate, which is a, such a huge, uh, important sporting challenge that it might make sense to just clear everything out of his head, uh, of so that he knows that afterwards he doesn't have to care about anything else. It will always be there and such. I understand that it's not maybe a reasonable decision, but it is somewhat tempting if you think candidate is really what's going to define me in a way. But uh, it was a bit uh, alias as Fioja uh, logic. Uh -huh. uh, exactly that. <laughs> what you said, yeah? To clear your head with everything and just to play candidates and see, mm -hmm. see what's going on. That's why he declined. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons why he declined. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, can it, can, um, Olympiad. Ali Reza is, is, well, it's not a team that could realistically win, right? But, uh, you know, but still. Um, why not? Ali Reza, Maxime. Jules, yeah, yeah. Bacro, Frassinet, they can't realistically win? I wouldn't think so, but it's of course it's possible. I know that Fress had he... They're probably the second seed, no? Currently, if they all play, yeah. they're the second seed yeah. for sure. No, that's actually... Mention the... 
But also with the, the system in the Olympia, do you think that United States is plus 50% chance of winning? I For think sure. they're 80%. You think chance they're 80 yeah. chance? Wow. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah they, are, they are so good and there is nobody even close. Okay. I mean, like, you you will have basically, I mean, like, uh, okay, if Fabi bought one, then it's so. But mm -hmm. I mean, like, who has a bot? Who knows? Three but Fabi, Wesley, Levon, and then Domingo. Ah, Levon. I mean, it's Levon. Ah, okay. So Wesley will be bot three. three. I mean, who can compete with that? I mean, we just. No oh. one really. I understand. Yeah. This, this, this don't have mm -hmm. any weakness. I mean, like, yeah, it's really. You need some team like uh, last time they lost to Poland, I think. Yeah. So you need Not some sure something there. exceptional to happen, like. And Poland was on fire, I mean, in the previous... Yeah, Olympia, Poland I mean, got a bit short-tained, changed the last Olympiad, not getting in a medal, actually. Yeah, that was very unlucky, because they did, they did amazingly well. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, they won a lot of uh, I remember. crucial matches, but I think, okay, it's always the same, yeah? If you, if you, do, if you lose one match, then you are just... <laughs> yeah, last round uh, pairing. You are out of top mm -hmm. three, yeah. No, but uh, there's some of the chess superpowers, China and Russia... Mm -hmm. Not being there, it opens the door for everybody else, no? Like all these teams like Norway. Norway is good with Magnus, Tari, Hammer. Germany, Johann Netherlands. Sebastian Christian, Germany. Germany, Netherlands. Nah, come France on. France B, don't, like this. Not too badly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, France may be pushing. Um, no, no, Netherlands. Very Netherlands, you are pushing it. <laughs> no, no, but it's a reasonable not, point. I'm saying it's, ob it's not obvious who's the... Even the second best team, and it feels like yeah. 10, 15 teams have chance for a medal, no? No, no it the will India be like teams, Poland, Poland, of course, Ukraine, yeah, Azerbaijan. Poland, Ukraine. I mean, In Ukraine India B. Azerbaijan, that actually yeah. is a serious India B. Yeah. Yeah. Armenia, I have no so, idea who's playing for them, but Sargisyan will have like yeah. 8 out of 11 on board one, and then the others will do fine. Like mm -hmm. it. <laughs> No, and it's going to uh, be interesting how does that, that way. Mm -hmm. So how many teams they will get uh, from India? I didn't get that part from... Usually you get two teams and then if it's an uneven number at a certain point, you, you can you nominate a three team. And as the organizer, usually you can sort of make sure that that number is uneven at the point where you yeah. nominate your third team. So if you, you follow me on Twitter, teams. you will know that Russia got five in 2010. But, uh, Not following okay, that's a, great, that's a great transition, uh, Peter. Yeah, that's your favorite <laughs> yeah, corner. <laughs> we are all waiting for that. We will have uh, coffee with Jan, and so the question we is, should mention before wrong? we let Peter talk that <laughs> we're recording this on the sixth of June, and yeah. tomorrow is Peter's Super Bowl, the seventh of June, <laughs> where the nominations for the teams for FIDE government—I don't know what's called—FIDE presidency are announced. Peter, your team. Team Barish Polis Nielsen is busy trying to to find what's it five federations that endorse them. So you exactly you need you are in each co continent, yeah. You are allowed five till eight um, countries who endorses you, and uh, you need to have as a minimum of five endorsements, and they have to be from the four four of them has to be from different FIDE continents. FIDE continents is uh, Europe, it's uh, Asia, it's Africa. And then it's uh, Americas, but I think Asia includes uh, New Zealand and Australia, for instance, and uh, Americas is both uh, Northern and Southern America and such. So, um, yeah, we are working hard on so that. So how many do you have? Ah, that was straight to the point. Well, generally, so, we would sort of try and hide such, but I think uh, as we are transparency. Trans transparency, then uh, we have three at the moment. So we are trying our best to get to five. And uh, are you going to ask me next which ones? Or sure, sure. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, uh, New Zealand has been so kind to uh, endorse us, and so has uh, England and uh, my second home country, Lithuania. So that's the current status. Boom. So okay, two so to go. Need in, uh, so you need in America, one in America and one in Africa, right? You, you nailed you it. Yeah. Um, so, so do, do you think the system is fair or not? It's uh, quite reasonable in a way. I think that you can't have just anybody uh, yeah. running for for sort of uh, feed the presidency for, for fun. And uh, well, of course, if that means that I will be excluded from that, it's uh, it's not the way we, we hoped for it to progress. But I think it's quite reasonable. I think even, I mean, as you know, my wife is uh, involved in Lithuanian policy and such. And uh, to, for instance, run for the European Parliament, they need to have I forgot if it's 10,000 signatories and such. I mean, there has to be some kind of, uh, yeah, of course. M milder obstacle before you just uh, put your name on, the, on, on that. It doesn't have to be 
overly complicated and such. And of course, um, well, for us, it might be a problem that we are we are less connected in, in, in certain uh, parts of the world. But um, well, so be it if that's going to be, be an obstacle and such. But um, that's the current status for, for, for our team. Um, so right now, I don't know. Well, there seems to be four teams, but there is a rumors of a fifth team. But uh, it's such a hidden rumor that I don't even know who it is to that extent. Um, so that <laughs> I can't At the time see. when this podcast comes out, we'll have found out, no? Yeah, yeah you'll have. It's actually so, too late to campaign because... Yeah, exactly. I'm not campaigning here. It's, it's going to be decided. So, um, you know... So, so, even... I mean, the deadline is tonight at midnight? Or no, tomorrow, to, midnight? tomorrow at, uh, I think, 6 o'clock. Uh, probably uh, Greenwich Mean Time or something like that. So, uh, you know, yeah. Okay. Um, so you are you are, you are actively searching for federations, or well, it's not your your task? Yeah. Of course, we are trying that, but uh, well, we are doing our best. We are in communication with some. We'll see how it goes and such. But uh, I mean, you know that. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> that's you know what. But um, well, but also, I think at least if you look at Dwokovic's uh, Facebook page. Well, he doesn't seem to be that convinced of winning. At least uh, there was a statement recently that uh, someone, he was saying that there is someone running as sort of his backup ticket. And he wanted to make it very clear that this was not his backup ticket and they were trying to use his good name uh, and such. So I don't know exactly what's going on there in a way, because, well, they're not that as transparent than we are apparently. Um, but uh, He didn't no, mean you, yeah? I don't think he mean that we are his backup ticket because uh, I think we have been, well, rather clear on that we are not. But I mean, I don't know what goes uh, on behind uh, the stages in, in, in to that extent uh, and such. So there seems to be some interesting, but we'll know much more in the in the next episode. Of course, how many will be in the race? Also, well, uh, I think the only two who has sort of made public that they have their five endorsements is Dvorkovic and uh, and Sheripov. Uh, Inal Sheripov, the Belgium slash Chechen uh, film producer and such. But um, Sheripov, I know very little about. Again, I said it the last time and I will say it again. Uh, for me, he's yeah, some sort of an, an enigma, I have to admit. I mean, like, I even forgot the name. I don't know how about you, Jan. If you are more into details, but I do well, He goes for a walk with me every day. So I'm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not... You just Not don't care. As right? Invested in the topic, yeah. 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 No, I think let's face it. I think Vorkovic is gonna win, and the other stuff, yeah. like we could debate if, yeah, what you're doing is an important stance for a better world or not. But I don't think it has many practical implications if Sheripov gets five or six votes, or and if you get the the endorsement. Or, but that or not. exemplifies a bit my problem that I think that. Most people agree that we can't have a leadership that's that close to the Kremlin. But to actually get up of their comfortable chair, they will not. And, uh, well, that's sort of where, well, that's where you sit right now. But do most people agree that Barish Polis Nielsen would be better for the chess world? I don't know. But then we should uh, find something even better than the Barish Polis Nielsen ticket. You, you, know, you know who to whom you can ask uh, for help to get your, uh, to be able to, to run? No, you should ask Zvorkovic. I mean, for him, it's very good. If there is, the more candidates there is, the best it is for him because. Is it your end game, Peter? Are you calling Zvorkovic <laughs> tonight? Are you saying no. I'm you stepping out of the race if I become a vice president? No, that's not my end game. I no, can you should guarantee call, uh, you Zvorkovic that. and ask him. I mean, for him, it's good. And that's actually well, that's an advantage with the Barish Polis Nelson ticket that it, we are so obviously not in it to get uh, like a vice president ticket. I mean. Well, Boris Polic is Ukrainian. He can obviously not work with them. And uh, I'm married to a highly ranked Lithuanian uh, politician. I can obviously not have anything to do with that. It's clear that we So if FIDE offered you to run the ethics committee, you would say no, because they're under Russian leadership? Correct. And I cannot uh, do that uh, at present. That is uh, very obvious, yes. Although, of course, you are dangling the biggest post there is, but even so, no. <laughs> See, he sounds a little tempted. <laughs> now yeah. let's not try to no. corrupt Peter, and it's it's the usual which we have every week. That's fun yeah. to mock again, Peter, I mean, but I understand me, the bigger I, issue is serious. I promise you, for me, it's a very both painful and important subject, but uh, I don't feel a much love for, or sympathy for you guys. 
No. <laughs> Laurent is asking for love and sympathy. That's your that's your task. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a request. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, uh, I, as I told you, I, I'm sure you would be a much better uh, deputy president than the current one. Uh, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's yeah. see. I mean, yeah. Let's say that. we have this saying in Denmark. I, hope, that I, mean, I mean, what? That should have You're been a serious candidate, so you should be able to run. I mean, like, it's Sorry? a pity you... Yeah, I'm I mean, trying. We might, we might still succeed. I'm, we are very yeah. much working on that. But, uh, well, also, I mean, I'm in Stavanger. My pre primary job is to help Magnus uh, of course. and such, while the current administration have been doing it for months, if not years. And, uh, well, you can see that they have had uh, a tons of uh, visits to, to federations, which you can argue is fair enough. But, of course, it gives them a... Huge strategical advantage and such. But here in Savangar, all the movers and shakers of the chess world are in the same hotel. It's a great place to campaign. Yeah, I'm not sure that you're right about that, to be honest. Uh, of course, yeah. No, I'm sorry, guys. But uh, yeah, uh, you are wasting uh, serious campaigning time for... Okay, so <laughs> what, what's wrong? So what's wrong with Fide? So tomorrow is a Super Bowl, <laughs> yeah. so we'll find out. But what's wrong with Fide this week, Peter? Could give you a lot of stuff, but I mean, I think that I'm, as I'm currently campaigning uh, and uh, might still be in the running for, for feed the deputy president. Maybe I shouldn't misuse it, or you think that's okay? Uh, why? Uh, no, uh, go, go ahead. Transparency. It's okay. No, no, but uh, no. Uh, well, apparently someone has written in our script that uh, I have sort of been insinuating that Fina is starting to delete uh, documents. I don't think that's particularly true, but. Peter Dockers had a, an, an article about, uh, well, the things that happens in FIDE, and he wanted to give a link to uh, when, when Putin is sort of endorsing FIDE and the online Olympiad. But currently, this is the only news item on the FIDE side that doesn't seem to be working. Uh, so it's tempting to think that it has been, uh, you know, deleted or whatever. Also, you can see that Dvorkovich had a campaign page, which also from 2018, which has also been taken down, and you can't really see the, the promises they made and such. I think it's minor details. It could just be that you stop paying the bills or whatever, something like that. But of course, um, I mean, it could also be that actually sort of things with Putin can't really be accessed from the West anymore because of it being propaganda and you're trying to stop that. So there is uh, interesting theories going around there, but I don't think they are overly important to, to, to that extent. But um, well, I think for me, of course, the main problem is that, um, uh, let's say, a lot of the feeder employees seem to be actively campaigning and traveling uh, the world together. You saw Bologan was traveling with Dvorkovic uh, earlier. You saw that Dana is traveling and such. And while I have no evidence for them campaigning, it's uh, likely to think so that they are employed by the current system. And that, of course, um, gives a discrepancy in the sort of, uh, well, the number of resources there is for the various campaigns at the moment. And it's going to be very difficult. But that wasn't a secret going in. No, it's basically you're saying, we talked about this, I don't like what Mike Tyson stands for, so I shall challenge him to a world championship heavyweight fight. Which you could say is a brave thing to do. Or you could say, <laughs> shouldn't we wait for an even more powerful challenger? to take down Mike Tyson. Yeah, and it could be that uh, tonight this uh, fifth challenger comes up there and just uh, smacks out Tyson and uh, beats everyone on the way. I don't think that me and Barish Polish is uh, blocking the way from for somebody else. I don't think they think, damn it, okay, now we're not going to run because they are there. That's not my impression in that way. I mean, so Mike Tyson, if good. you're watching, big fan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. It's surprising indeed, yeah. Okay, <laughs> again. Love uh, the hangover. I think sort of let's be kind to our listeners and uh, me and move on to questions. Yeah, mm. Peter is not really, yeah, he, he felt much, I mean, before running. He's much happier like uh, trashing Fide when he's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, no, he was, race, no? He, he was I, much actually, happier. I, I have to go on Norwegian weeks. television to talk about it today. So let's see how I'll perform there if I'll be wow. in good or bad mood or which kind of questions they will ask. But let's see, yeah. Okay, so we should answer to the um, Let's do that. to the questions of our viewers. Ich bin Banski, who is asking, what is the optimal crew size for a tournament? Is it more seconds, more ideas, or is it more discussion, or and less results when the crew is too big? Well, I'm a bit biased there because that's how I sort of uh, feed my family. But 
I will quote Ben Larson, who said that uh, Geller came and talked to him and said, damn it, you Westerners are so lucky. You only have to play chess. You don't have to teach your seconds as well. So, I mean, uh, well, it's not always a plus to have a second, but at least uh, I hope that we are providing something, us who are helping Magnus. But uh, I think it's a balance. But I have noticed that nowadays, even young players on national teams, they all seem to think they need to have seconds and such. So it seems yeah. to be a growing profession. So there's too much information. I, I mm -hmm. mean, like, just... Also, uh, the job got so much easier with engines being so strong, you need to be less specifically qualified of course what peter does no one else in the world could do but uh, other than that like providing a file based on leela and stockfish yeah. is not so tough anymore so you don't need super experts to give you a file no. overnight and save you some time right? i disagree of course <laughs> me too uh, no i mean it's not it's not so i mean like uh, you have to understand how the guy will react and so on i mean it takes some skills no there's a lot of not... nuance to it obviously but i'm saying since engines are so much better the of course. Um, quality of the moves that will be ah. spit out will be much more reliable yeah. and you don't need to filter that. And you can also as argue much. that as sure. engines get better and better, it becomes a more complicated job to actually get on it, so you need even better people for that. Isn't that a sure. positive spin to keep our job? But you, you still enough. don't get an edge. No, but you try at least. Anyway. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That's no, true. also, yeah, you're right. If we look at Magnus's games here, for example, of course, the computer sh shows zero, 0 there, but you need to find the right spots where humans could make mistakes. I think it goes both ways, but the time time saving element of any mm -hmm. second, I think, but I think th is there. But it's the, right the, that the second part of the question is very good, like uh, because we were five uh, during the last couple of matches, and uh, wh when does it? When does a team become too big? I mean, I could imagine easily that 10 people would be way too many. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about six, seven, but five seems to be a reasonable limit already. Well, I think normally it has been four, so then people can work two and two, two and two. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's five in Team Magnus is because uh, I'm sort of uh, hidden uh, at, at the venue in a way, so that you are four at the second center, and then I somehow function as a a bridgehead between uh, Magnus and, and the team, right? When I was with the yeah, we should also was mention, four which I guess is obvious that team sizes for a World Championship match is very different from a yeah. tournament where mm -hmm. pretty much everybody, I think, works with one yeah. or sometimes um, two seconds with one being on site and the mm -hmm. other providing some, some info. But yeah, for World Championship matches, the, the teams grow. Mm -hmm. I would agree. I think. I think. Yeah. Four, four people and one, yeah, team lead slash organizer, whatever you want to call. Peter's role there seems like seems like a good size. Of mm -hmm. course, maybe the four people could be improved, but I think the number the number is fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything more to add? Oh, next good. question. If Magnus won't play, uh, watch. Him. I didn't read the question before. We are, we are so unprepared. I'm amazed. I, I did. If Magnus won't play, uh, watch for yourself. If, will, he, will he be ambassador of the Chicken Chess Club? Because he will run away from playing super strong GM like Ding Kawana or, uh, give, or give title to half stream, uh, to streamer. Okay, we, we, we got it. So. Uh, yeah, if Magnus doesn't play a uh, World Championship match, is he a chicken? No. I don't think his reasons no. for not playing are fear-based, so that's <laughs> yeah. gonna be gonna be a bit of a stretch. But he's still welcome yeah, to be yeah. an ambassador <laughs> no. for the Chicken Chess Club. We have a friendly community, Actually, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I agree with Jan. I mean... The reasons he's giving is not uh, fear and uh, well that is sort of the the prime uh, sort of component of the chicken chess club so no but also we know him well and we know that he's not really that's i think um, in general. i mean well you can argue why did fisher not play karpov that could be because he was not convinced he would win the match for instance and such uh, but really? i mean i think so uh, but that's a different okay. discussion ah damn it now we lost half our our listeners, right? Because this is a toxic... That's okay. Yeah, it's okay. He'll come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. 
thanks. Uh, but um, I mean, no, I think simply it's uh, Magnus is not a chicken, and uh, if anything, well, he put up his twenty-seven. Sorry, twenty-nine hundred. Twenty-seven hundred will be us uh, target, and uh, well, I mean, he's gonna play quite some tournaments, which is actually strangely enough a more difficult for win to him than a world championship match where he will be a huge favorite. So. I don't think it's that, but uh, well, of course, I'm extremely biased. No, of course, not that. I mean, well, we all we biased. Agree, I think. So, uh, in which language do PH uh, talk to Magnus? That I know the answer, but when you are alone with him, so you, you talk in Danish and he's talking in something in Norwegian. As yeah, yeah, as we, we will just speak uh, our native languages that we have always been doing and it's always been working fine for us. It's clear that. But uh, other Norwegians, I might have to switch to English. For instance, uh, Hammer seems to prefer to speak with me in, in English. But with Magnus, uh, I just speak Danish, he speaks Norwegian, and it seems to work uh, rather well. It can also be that uh, because the topics we know, well, we the vocabulary functions quite well in both languages and such. But um, And what, what's, what amazed me uh, once in uh, training camp that I noticed that Nils Gandelius was talking in Swedish. Yeah, yeah. You guys, you we are, we are having a conversation in three different languages, but uh, everyone would uh, speak in their native language and understand each other, which was but, kind of very, very nice. Well, well, we originate from the same language, and even at short moments, we were just one country or more often two countries and such. So um, it's not um, that difficult in a way, but. Uh, well, for instance, in, in Sweden, uh, on the streets, I have tried to talk in Danish and they switch to English immediately and such. So there is also dialect base and things like that. But uh, exactly together with uh, Magnus and Nidat, um, we just speak in our native languages. And, uh, but maybe basically, mm -hmm. Norwegian and Danish is the same vocabulary or very, very similar. Just pronunciation is very different. While Norwegian and Swedish, it's different vocabularies, but pronunciation is very similar. So Danish and Swedish is the toughest because the pronunciation is different and the vocabulary is different. Uh, you could be right. I learned something new here, but it actually right. sounds, oh. sounds quite... Okay. You, you learned that. <laughs> <Okay>. Fair enough. <laughs> you are called Gustafsson for a reason, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it, it works. And uh, I think maybe also as we spend a lot of time together, maybe it's a bit more relaxing speaking in your native language to some extent. I don't know, uh, but uh, probably not really. Yeah. But, uh, it's pity, uh, Jan, actually, that uh, I can't speak in French and you, you understand, and you speak in German, I would understand. That. that would be really nice, actually. No, we can just speak French to each other. <laughs> pas de problème. <laughs> Qu'est-ce qu'on fait toujours? No, that's <laughs> not... Wow, amazing. I Should remember I correct it? Or... <laughs> <laughs> I remember from a training camp I had with Jan maybe 25 years ago, and he, he answered the phone, and I thought, damn, his German is really good. I mean, I was very surprised. And so at some point I realized he's actually German. But, uh, yeah. Well, it's uh, easy. It's true, true. Anyway. Um... So uh, last question for this week. How did you become chess chickens? Was there a certain uh, tilting point in your careers? Jan, first. I, I think you're born a chicken. Yeah, like obvious. in my first German championship, under 11, I made nine draws. <laughs> Lost one, won one. Respect. <laughs> then at some point I got too strong, so I started beating some of the other kids, but I found back to my chicken ways when yeah. I faced stronger opposition again. I think also it's inborn. It was very much my natural instinct and uh, I think that's why it took me a considerable amount of time to actually get to like 2-6 and something like that. I mean way too many draws and I think also you can do quite some things not to be a chicken and I worked with a sports psychologist that did a lot of things but put yourself under enough pressure you will come back to your basic instincts and for me that would be being a chicken but of course you can simulate not being a chicken and be quite successful but i still think it's uh, it's there at the core and uh, well you can get used to live being a chicken i think actually I Laura's not to... not really a chicken so he can't i started in. to play i mean like when i was young i don't know if you guys started by one e4 and playing some sharp uh, super sharp lines which i did till uh, I mean, I remember uh, Peter, our first game actually in Bundesliga, it was on Night Off. Uh, Thanks for the reminder. To remind you, but uh, I just mated you. I forced um, myself to play the Night Off because I thought I was playing a weaker player, but uh, 
I was not being yeah. a chicken, but it didn't really work out the way I hoped. I mean, a weaker player, not in terms of fighting at that time, but yeah. I'm telling you, that's wow. what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, then I started when I, I realized that my calculations, at least I felt it was uh, becoming worse. I started to play D4 and more uh, soft. So, I mean, like, you, you, you are so... I mean, like, you become a chicken because, uh, well, you calculate less well, you have, uh, um, you cannot keep the tension uh, as good as when you are in your early uh, 20s. You cannot have a shark game every day, it's, it's what I mean. But, like. but that's not that being a chicken, that's maybe so. adjusting to old age, yeah. but being a chicken are these instincts that you know it's plus EV to continue the game here, but you still know that you're deep down inside, you want the draw. That's what I think. I Laurent yeah. might be lazy or thinks and think, okay, it's Sunday morning, it's Bundesliga, it's 10 o'clock. Not very bright. I didn't have but coffee. That... It's, it's not, <laughs> but you it's said not... lazy and something else before yeah, the show. Yeah, I, I forgot now. But it's, uh, I mean, <laughs> it's different from being a chicken, I think. it's. Uh, yeah. I mean, you might lead to some of the same conclusions, but you come from a different place. And, uh, I think, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm just lazy. Okay, thank you. No, I'm no, but lazy. I mean... No, I mean, we the can lazy all, chess club. We maybe, can all be that uh, as well, but uh, yeah. still, yeah, yeah. So, so I think it's um, it's a quality or maybe a hindrance if if you see it like that. Uh, being a chicken is something that you are born with and it's very natural, and then you can try and change it to a certain extent. Or like Laurent, you can try and achieve it, but uh, it, it you know it's hard to imitate if you're not born like it. Yeah. Okay, Stuff. so um, let's go for the chickens of the, of the week, my favorite category. Oh, can't Jan, wait. Yeah, Jan doesn't like, of course. Uh, so I can start. I have, I have a nice couple. I told you before, Wesley and Jan discussing their games. I, I should... I mean, it's a very likable show, but you, you can feel from their uh, recommendations that uh, it's very wise, very sound, but it's not the most, you know, risky uh, option uh, in general. So you should watch by yourself. And, we just say uh, what we think. You're not, you're not going to yeah. ruin my talks with Wesley. Big fan. Can't no, I wait. like I, I like Wesley, but it's clear that you have a... Um, you have a common understanding. I mean, you understand each other. I mean, you don't need to, to explain to, to so people. So you are general... nominating them both or you just, uh, I don't get the point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. 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 For their, for, for their discussion. I mean, it's so nice. I mean, like, it's clear yeah. that they understand each other. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Sure. Uh, All so. right. As usual, I you don't, have, don't have much. Let me think. We should nominate Rapport for dropping out of this tournament at very short notice. Hmm. Um, he also switched from, I think we discussed this last week now, yeah. from Hungarian yeah. Federation to Romanian, which, but I don't think there are chicken-based reasons for, because it's actually an underrated chicken country. Hungary, the Hungarian chess school, I think, is <laughs> deeply is... rooted in chicken yeah. culture as well. There are exceptions like Rapport or Polgar, yeah. but in general, it's be good at openings, be good at end games be happy to make a draw. So I fully endorse the Hungarian chess school and rapports leaving it is very saddening to me. <laughs> um, yeah, who else? Like, of course, I think we've already mentioned the guys dodging the Olympia. That's also not for chicken reasons. Hmm. But I find it sad. I find it sad that not all the teams manage to show up to the Olympia because it's still, still special if we had, okay, we can't have Russia this time around. But if we have all the best teams, it's exciting. While now, with the U.S. all-star team from all over the world and no one else being able to compete, it doesn't feel like a real chess Olympiad, which with I find the, a little sad. So, how is it? The U.S., it's nerds plus some, yeah? <laughs> so, they have Shankland and the nerds. Yeah? So we... we had a debate with Magnus, if Magnus should join Team China to, to find a rival <laughs> for the US would be a great team no China for one Magnus for two Ding three Yu Yang Yi four Wei Yi five Bu like I, I'd be I'd be on board with team team China Carlson okay. I'm gonna say something about uh, Taipei but let's not go in that direction okay so <laughs> I cannot uh, yeah I can't help make it political when I talk so about something. one chicken one chicken Peter maybe one federation who didn't give you 
So the nomination oh, so is, far. Uh, yeah, that I could, but I think it's... <laughs> That's uh, 182. It, it's fair enough. There's <laughs> probably more than that. Um, yeah. No, I mean, well, I'm always uh, praising Vichy, so maybe like maybe him, uh, the chicken. I mean, he's uh, he's playing incredibly well chess, and uh, he's not being a chicken at the, all of the board, so I'll praise him for that. But uh, uh, He like, was a bit chicken against Wesley. He's two uh, pawns up, and he goes for the move repetition. Point, but, uh, he yeah. did do the chicken chess club, so I'm proud. He's uh, running for feeder deputy, so he should uh, say something about that as well, I would say. But uh, mm. Mainly, I'm just praising him for being too good a chess player and uh, finding too little time for, for politics. So let me let me bash Vichy a bit to get some kind of fight while I'm still in the race. All right. Okay. So I think uh, I think that's all uh, for today. We will uh, let very much. I actually and Jan uh, walk and probably meet next week, most likely. I, I have been French League, guys. I have a message right. on my Skype that's saying I have to meet Magnus ten minutes ago, so I'm just gonna run. Okay. Okay. Also, I also See you guys. Thank you. Ah, Skype bye -bye. so advanced. And bye. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs>